question this evening is, is it all well with your soul? Richard, just play that through for me just a little bit more. That is a beautiful song. It is an absolutely incredible song. But the question this evening is, is it truly well with your soul, young people? Um, it's okay to tell Jesus that it's not all right. It's not all well. It's okay to let Jesus know that I'm afflicted, that I got issues and that I'm, I'm struggling, Lord. It's okay to say to Jesus that there's some things about myself I don't like. It's quite healthy and necessary to confess that I, I come to these meetings with the wrong attitude at times. That my mind is not open, that my mind is closed, or that my preferences are more important than the power of your word. It's okay. But the question above all else is, is, all, is it all well with your soul? Um, let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. As we deal with your word tonight, and more importantly, as your word deals with us, give us, my God, the spiritual discernment to see ourselves as you see us. And help us, oh God, to truly be able to say, it is well with my soul. Help us to go from these meetings night in and night out, having surrendered something, having given, given something over to you. In Jesus' name. Everybody, um, this evening, I'm glad that brother, brother Richard is looking pretty good. Give him a hand clap, everybody. <laughs> and I want y'all to know he's perfumed up, too. <laughs> I walked past, I said, ooh, Richard, smelling good, too. So congratulations, man, on five years, boy. That's big time, brother. You're not the majority, you know, you are the minority to make it past that three-year mark. So we praise God for you. Um, Glenn, are you in here? Where's Glenn? Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn. Come on up here, Glenn. Come on, help me out. Help the preach out, Glenn. Come on, help the preach out. Corinne, come on up here and help the preach out. Where's Corinne? Did she leave? Did she pull out? Okay. Uh, come on up here, Brother Glenn. Everybody say, hey, Glenn. Hey. <laughs> Glenn's going to help me out here. There she is, Corinne. There she is, trying to hide. Come on up here. That's right. Now, uh, uh, well, we're about to do something, something up here. And... Um, I'm going to ask them, you know, they, they're brave. I'm going to ask them to give me uh, 20 push-ups. Okay. Well, did I tell you 10 or 15? Yeah, five. I didn't... 
Okay. Come on, hold on. No, 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 no. By faith, we're going to do 20. All right? You ready? Get in positions, y'all, for push-ups. Can everybody see? Okay. Come on. Ready? And, and Corinne, you want to do ladies' style or men's style? <laughs> Lady style or men's style? Ah, oh, oh, no, well, well, okay. Now, on your mark, now, I want y'all to count them off, all right? I want y'all to count them off to 20. Okay, y'all ready? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Her along. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. All right? Ready? Now, y'all gonna count off. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah! 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 Oh! 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 Look at Glenn! Oh! Look at Glenn! Come on, Glenn! Go, Glenn! You got it, Glenn! Come on! Glenn. How many was that? How many was that? You just got caught up in it, didn't you, Glenn? Corinne, how many was that? 20. That was 20. Give a hand, y'all. Okay, you can go. Y'all can be seated. You can be seated. You can be. Now, anybody else out there can do? Tw- well, anyway, anybody else got? Well, do you realize? I heard that. Who called me old man? <laughs> Who called me old man? Okay, hold on. No, 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 no. We got it. We got it. We got it covered. I know you can do about 50, but we got it covered. We got it covered. You can do. We got it covered. We got it covered. Thank you. Now, check this out. Check this out. Glenn got caught up in the moment, didn't he? And so did Corinne. She did 20 push-ups. He did 20 push-ups. Well, how many you did, Glenn? 25, 30? Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, you went above and beyond. Hallelujah for you. You're Superman, all right? Thank you. But Corinne did 20, and she did them well, and I'm so proud of her, too. She did them. Right. And Glenn, he's a good sport because we were playing, we were throwing back football today, and um, I asked him, and and hey, fellas, uh, where, where the rest of your boys at, Glenn? Are they over there with you? The rest of the fellas, where are they? Okay, well, at least he's the one that's brave. I see you over there, Marcus. You, you didn't want to do it for me, but that's all right. Um, we were playing football today, and I said, man, how many push-ups can you do? And they said, well, I can do about 10, 5. I said, okay. So Glenn came, and he said, I'll do them. Then I asked Corinne tonight, and she was more than willing to just give it, give it her best. She did it. One day, y'all, talking about this whole physical exercise thing. One day I got the chance to go to the gym. I figured that, you know, I'd recapture my days of being 17 and 18 years of age and about 19 there, but I figured that I'd capture, I'd go capture the glory years, all right? So I decided that what I was going to do was that I was going to uh, go work out, got my membership, I went and bought my weightlifting gloves. I went and got, yeah, my weightlifting gloves, got my, got my right shoes, bought my Reeboks, you know, and um, got the right clothes and everything so I could look the part, got the, got the shirt, you know, that showed the shoulders and all of that stuff. And I was determined that I was going to go work out and have a good workout and be a different man, be a better man when I got out of the gym. I was determined. So what I did was I went into the gym, got my, with my nice new locker bag, opened up my gym, my gym locker, put my stuff in the locker bag. This is at Bally's in, in California. And I decided that I was going to, you know, get it together. So I went out there. And, um, so I went out there and I warmed up a little bit, you know, did my thing, shook off a little bit of the rusty and um, decided I was ready. So I said, man, what I want to do, the, I'm going to do, do bench press. I'm going to do the bench press. So I went in there, and um, I saw some strange-looking people in the gym. 
some very strange. I saw people in the gym that had no necks. You know, they just, you know, head and, neck, head and shoulders, no neck. Just walking around. All buffed up. All sucked up. Just walking around. And I said, oh, man, that's what I want. Man, that's what I want. I'm going to get that. I'm going to have a neck, but I want to get the rest of it. So I looked at the equipment. I saw the lat pull down. I saw the shoulder pulls. I saw the crunch, the ab machines. All girly stuff, don't want that. I decided what I wanted was the bench, so I was going to get under the bench. Now, I said, hold on, let 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 me get this right. So I cracked, I did like Glenn did, twisted a little bit. Got up on the bench, said, hey, 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 this is going to be easy. This is going to be nice. I got down, was on the bench. I said, okay, got up under the bench. (sighs) No weights, just the bar, right? (laughs) Just warming up, just warming up. Just warming up. I'm just warming up. So I'm, I'm up there like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, baby. So I went over to the weight racks. Picked up a 25. Bang. Picked up another 25. Put it on this side. Bang. And I said, hold on, man. Looked at the no next. Oh, they're going to think I'm a girly man. They're going to think I'm a little coward. So, say, hold on, forget this. Let me pick up, get myself a 35. Picked up the 35. (laughs) Boom! Put the little locks on. His time now. Got that look in my eyes. Psyching myself up, had my Gatorade. Got up under the weight bench. Ah. Did a little crunch, you know, just to show him I was ready. I said, all right, here we go. like a bad Bruce Lee movie, all right? <laughs> Under the bench. <sighs> Eyes were red. Watery. I was embarrassed, so I went up, I got up, I was like, Got my Gatorade. <laughs> Drank my Gatorade. Said, okay, I ain't going down like that. <laughs> I ain't no punk. <laughs> Lillian didn't get born no punks. I'm going to get this. So I said, hold on. Okay, I know what I got to do. Let me take the 35s off, okay. <laughs> so I went back, removed the, the little... Wait, stay, put the 35 back, boom, I'm going to put a 25 on. I'm going to do this. 25 on. Boom. 35 on. Put the 25 on. Boom. Put the weight stays on. Boom. Weight stays on. Boom. <laughs> I want to make sure they're watching this time.
All these no necks, they think they something. <laughs> ain't nothing to me, ain't nothing to it but to do it, baby. Because <laughs> I'm the man. <laughs> so I got back under the weight, stretched a little bit more. Oh, nah, baby. Got back under the weight. I'm in the zone now, y'all. So I breathe. I'm like, I know what the problem was. I didn't breathe right the first time. Okay, I know what it is. Okay. So I got my gloves on. Here I go. Get the weight up. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, bring it down nice and easy. Nice. Boom. Okay, come on, come on. One. One. Okay, okay. Are they looking? Yeah, they're looking. Okay. Come on, you got to get at least two. <laughs> Boom on my chest. Strange thing happened, y'all. Somewhere between the ending of one and the beginning of two, I lost all my strength. <laughs> I don't know where it went, but somehow it got out of me. So I'm on my back, and I'm like, okay, two. Come on, baby, two. Count to ten. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, three, two, one. Back on my chest. Back on my chest. The weight and the bars across my chest. The chest that had preached a hundred or so sermons. The chest that held babies and baby dedications. The chest that was now bruised. The bar is resting across my chest. Across my chest. Settling in my chest. <laughs> growing roots in my chest. And I'm holding the bench. I'm holding the bar. And I'm like, okay. Let's try. Let's, okay. 20, 19, 18. Count down from 20 again. Okay. Whew. Okay. I got 50 over here, 50 over there, plus the bar. Okay, and the two, okay, that's why, okay, okay. So I'm sitting and I'm like, okay, now, ah, be cool. Be cool. What you gonna do, bro? I'm gonna pray. <laughs> Lord, I'm your servant. Don't embarrass me. I don't need the, uh, don't teach me a lesson right now, Jesus. <laughs> teach me one later, all right? So the bar's settling across my chest. And so I look to the left, and I look to the right, and all the no-necks are still over there. <laughs> and then I say, okay. How do I get out of this with dignity? How do I look good and still get out of this, this trap I'm in, out of this mess I'm in? How do I preserve uh, 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 my rep, even though I ain't got no rep, 
How, how do I preserve my rep in a gym where nobody knows me or in this situation where, oh, I'm trying to get it together. So, 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 so I start thinking and, you know, your mind starts doing different things when the blood cir- stops circulating right, you know. So I decide, OK, let me lean. Maybe I can lean it off to the left and then that way I can, you know, just scoot from under the bench. But when I do that, I look to the left and the new necks are looking at me. OK, I can't do that. That ain't going to work. That's going to make too much noise and that's going to look bad. Then I go to the right. OK. And the no necks over there are looking and, and working with each other and everybody talking and they laughing. I'm like, oh, see, they laughing at me. <laughs> they don't think I know, but they laughing at me. Paranoia sets in. And then I say, OK, come on, man, you got to get out of this thing. So I think to myself, man, maybe if I roll it up. Uh uh-uh. uh. OK. <clears throat> Let me see if I roll it down. Uh Uh-uh. That ain't going to work. I say, okay, what in the world am I going to do? All of a sudden, y'all, somebody walks in. And gets on top of the bench where I am, looks down at me and say, hey, man, you need a spot? You need somebody to help you with the weights, man? And in between the tears and the embarrassment, I look up and I say, mm-hmm. I need help. I said, mm-hmm. I need help. And she says... I'm still dealing with that. (laughs) I'm still not overcoming that. That one got me. Okay, that one still got me. So she says, what's your name? (laughs) I say, Michael. That's going to be my name in heaven anyway, so I might as well use it now. (laughs) I'm getting ready for the new earth, so I might as well use my heavenly name right now, all right? I might as well go... Might as well go to heaven now. See, she don't know I'm answering prophetically. Okay, she don't know that. So she reaches. She reaches. lift and you push I got you Y'all think that's funny, don't you? (laughs) Got a crease in my chest. You think that's funny. You think it's funny. I get debarrassed by a woman. I get embarrassed by... So she says, boom. She says, you know, Pastor... I'm like, and the hits just keep coming. The hits keep coming. Is there no stop? Is there no stopping this? 
I said, Pastor, how'd you know I'm a, how'd you know I'm a pastor? <laughs> she said, oh, you know, I work here at Bally's. And, you know, we look at what the application is and what you do and things of that nature. And, and she said, so uh, you're Pastor Ronald Pollard. <laughs> I said, you know, I was using my heavenly name. And she said to me, Pastor, listen, never come to the gym to lift weights if you don't have a workout partner. You come with a workout partner. Rule number one. Don't come in here by yourself. She said, even though I know how to lift weights, I don't come in here by myself. Now, now, y'all got to understand, it wasn't quite fair that she was a woman. I mean, she had the thighs of a football player or somebody. She was buff. You know, looked like a bodybuilder or something like that. So she was used to working out with weights, so she had an advantage over me, all right? Anyway, <laughs> she says, never come to the gym without a workout partner. Don't come to the gym thinking that you can get under. Oh, first of all, Pastor, how long has it been since you lifted weights? About eight years. And you trying to pick up 175 pounds or whatever that weight was. I don't know. 50, 50, 50 whatever. 150 pounds, 145, 150 pounds without any help? I said, yeah, the bar weighs 45. The two weights weigh 50 each on each side. So that, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Y'all figure out the math. And I said, well, she said, you got to build up to it. You can't, you can't just figure that you haven't been working out and then you can come and do it. And, and you know, she said, you used to play football in high school? I said, yeah, I used to play football. She said, Pastor, that was, that was in high school many years ago. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, um, I said, yeah. So, so she said, so, but you got you to gotta have a workout partner and, and, and you got to be willing to learn all over again. You got to be willing to start all over again. And I said, you look, you razzle, frazzle. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. I w- if I was entitled to this message, I'd call it either one, weightlifting, or number two, lessons from the bench. One of the things I learned while lifting those weights, excuse me, being buried by the weight, was that as long as I was on the bench and the weight was across my chest, the one of the things I learned is that I was not free. I learned that I couldn't move. I learned that the weight was greater than myself. I learned that I was imprisoned on the bench. And one of the lessons I learned from, uh, from being buried beneath that weight is that you can decide you can decide, I could have decided that, that there were other excuses I could have made. Let me tell you some of the excuses I thought about while I was on the bench. I figured that the reason I couldn't lift the weights was because my arms were too long. See, the no-neck guys, their arms were short, so, short, so they, could, they didn't have far to go off their chest. figure my arms, you know, it's not fair. My, my arms are longer than their arms. And so therefore, I, 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 you know, it's not fair to me. It's better, I learn next. We make, oh, I, I can make excuses. But it is better to be free and embarrassed <laughs> than imprisoned and hiding under the weight. While I was on the bench, y'all, I thought, you know, and I thought, I thought nobody else was paying attention. After she and I talked, one of the things she said to me was, Pastor, you need to know other people were watching you in the weight room. I said, huh? She said, they were watching you in the weight room. I said, so why didn't they help me? She said, because you didn't act like you needed help. You didn't act like you wanted help. She said, yeah, we were watching you too. She said, do you realize how long you were under the weight? I said, how long was I under the weight? She said, you were under that weight for almost 20 minutes. (laughs) 
I said, that's why my life was flashing. <laughs> okay, that's why I saw my child. I remember when my mama used to spank me. Or I know that may not be something y'all do. Or take me to school. I remember, oh, okay, that's what I, oh, okay. She said, he, she said, yeah, you were under that weight, that weight for almost 20 minutes. And that's why that crease in your chest is going to be there a little while. One of the other lessons I learned while on the weight bench is that while you don't think other people are watching you, and why do you don't believe that your weight or the weight that we have, while, while we believe that the weight we have is ours and ours alone, we, we, we fool ourselves and we think that nobody else understands the weight we carry. I want you to know we do. Oh, boy. Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah. Take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah. It says in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. For those of you who've got a weight that's pressed against your chest. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And then look at Isaiah 41, verse 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thee with thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, embarrassed, I'm so glad I had a a gym membership that could take me to other gyms. (laughs) I got what they call the premier membership. Premier membership allows you to travel other gyms. So I said, yeah, let me get away from that gym for a while because I'm, you know, Totally lost face there. I'm totally embarrassed. The truth of the matter is that everybody has to start from some point. Everybody has to start. So I got back my pride, picked it up off the ground, put it in my gym bag, Went home, never told my wife about the incident, you know. Then, uh, you know, bruised ego, punished cry, decided I'm going to start all over again. So I went somewhere else, and I did it right this time. I took a little person with me, brother with me, started working out, got back, my mojo. Right, got my mojo back, had some help, didn't start with 140, 550 pounds, Pastor. I started with 100 pounds, and I started doing what I could. I began lifting what I could, and soon enough, and strangely enough, I began to build up again. I began to build up to the point where 100 pounds was like that lady, hey, okay, Then I built up to the point where 145, 150 pounds was all right. I got it now. Took me a little while longer, but I learned that with a partner, I could build my strength. With a partner, I could build endurance. With a partner, I could build technique. With a partner, I could build confidence. And I began to build and build and build and build with my partner, my workout partner. And, and if he wasn't there, maybe some other people who gotten used to me at my new gym had seen me. And, and they decided that, wait, we will work out together. So I learned to spot them and they learned to spot me on the bench. And we learned to work out together and I learned to grow as I ought to grow. And I realized that if I had a partner in the beginning, I would have saved myself that embarrassment, the right kind of partner. In the beginning, I would have saved myself that embarrassment. Well, tonight, I believe Jesus says to us, God says to us, 
He's the right kind of partner. He's the right kind of partner. Yeah, I got my mojo back. Yeah, I learned proper technique. Yes, I learned to depend on my partner. And yes, I gained new strength. It's better for you to be free from the bench, free and, and free and emancipated from the weight, and then you can grow once you're free. Once you realize that you don't have to try to do it by yourself. Once you realize that if your weight, if the weight that you're bearing is a poor relationship with your parents, you don't have to bear that weight by yourself. If you realize that your weight, and as you realize that your weight is a poor relationship with your children and uh, uh, you have problems with peer pressure, you don't have to bear that weight by yourself. If your problem is answering the call of MTV and the clubs and smoking and premarital sex, you don't have to bear that weight by yourself. It is better for you to be free from that weight than to be trapped underneath that weight. Sometimes all you need is somebody to help you lift the weight. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we need you to free us from the weights that have us pinned to the benches. My God, some of our young people are caught up into all manner of evil. Some of our young people, oh God, are bearing weights. The weight is pressing against their chest, Lord, and it's leaving a lasting impression on their bodies and in their minds. We need you, God. We call to you this evening. We're asking you to do something special and wonderful in us. Point us to a person that can love us. Point us to a new resource, a new person who can pray with us. Somebody who can provide help for us. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to say this to you, then I'm, I'm done with the sermon. I heard Sister Teresa, is that it? Yeah. Teresa? Talk about storm cold. Davina, I just need you to stand up. Mo. Pastor Nick, Pastor Eddie, and the other pastors around this place. Watch me, young people. Stay with me. They love you. And they're doing all they can to provide for you opportunities to get the weight off your chest. You've got to get involved in service. That's how you get your spiritual muscles. That's how you get over feeling sorry for yourself when you help somebody else. That's how your self-esteem is improved and built and enhanced. But ministry they only had, out of all the young people around this camp, they only had 30 today. Praise God for that 30. Yes! But they should have double that number tomorrow. If you are not growing in Christ, if you are tired of spiritual things or you have a preference for other things or whatever, get involved in some service and try to Try to exercise your spiritual muscles. You may not be the best pain in the world, but go out there and, and be with them. Support them. Morale. They'll find something for you to do.
We come, we put on quality programs. I'm a youth director in my own conference. We just had a program in Anaheim, California, where we had over 3,500 3, to 4,000 young people there on Friday night, Saturday, and, and I mean, on, on the weekend, and then we had like about 1,500 during the week. I just did that. I was a co-coordinator for that. And we put on service programs for our young people. They all came for the praise and worship. They all, they loved that. And when we made the call for service, we got less than 150 young people and young adults. The first thing everybody did was say, that's not my gift. Well, how do you know it's not your gift if you don't try? And even if it's not your gift, everybody has the gift of helps at some level. But we need you to step up and, and, and help with storm cold. Why? Because your spiritual muscles need to be exercised. It's good to praise and worship. We're going to keep it going every night during this, this, this tent. But add, but add some substance, some more substance to it. And get out there and serve somebody and do something with somebody else. Do something that's bigger than you. And finally, we've been talking to you about one of the ministries that has come from the vision of the Lord for us with Heritage Missions. Davina is standing over here. If you want to go, if you want to sponsor somebody, if you want to be a part, if you want to be inspired, if you want to use it as a resource for your church, the DVDs over here. Davina, raise your hand. Where are you? Okay, there she is right there. She's going to be over there. Okay, the, everything is set up over there. Please help us. You're purchasing uh, uh, the DVD or giving a donation of $32. Helps us with taking two young people on this international service opportunity. You don't have to, but we're asking you to help us. I'm asking you, please help us with this. And not only help us with Heritage Missions, open your hearts up to help with Storm Cold. Please, we need you. We're depending on you. And yes, we love you enough to say, let's go. Let's do it. Let's stand for prayer, everybody. Is there anything else? Okay. That's it. Okay. Anything, Pastor? That's it? Okay. What time is Storm Code tomorrow? Two o'clock here, y'all. They need at least, we can have more than 30, at least 60 young people to get up and get out. And Davina's over here um, with that. So let's bow our heads and praise God. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to expel the weight that so easily besets us. Thank you, my God, for all that you've done and all that you do. We love you. We praise you. Amen. See you all on tomorrow for Storm Cold. Davina's over here and also tomorrow night, all right? If you want to pray with me, I'm more than happy to. Let's have prayer, y'all. Let's come on up and let's do this, all right? Thank you.